All right, it's time to make the great announcement that everyone seems to want to ignore in this presidential race, that Ron Paul lately has been getting more delegates than Mitt Romney, um, something which is not really reported on in the mainstream media. Fox News, of course, has covered it exactly once uh, since his first delegate sweep that he underwent in Iowa. Of course, for those of you who have actually studied the uh, presidential campaign beyond what it says on CNN or Fox, Ron Paul has actually won, technically won four states that he didn't actually win. The reason for this is that there's a difference between the popular vote, at least within the GOP, there's a difference between winning the popular vote of a state and actually grabbing up the delegates in that state. And that is that in states like Iowa or Maine, you can send a bunch of your representatives and fans to storm the offices where they're holding the delegate counts. You can elect your own chairperson to that meeting, to that assembly, and sway the views of that assembly so that your man gets the votes. Now, this is a strategy that was first adopted by Warren G. Harding over a hundred years ago, and it won him the presidency. He was polling way behind in delegates, he was polling way behind in the popular vote, but he went on to get the nomination, and he indeed went on to become the president. That's exactly what Ron Paul is doing. Now, people have, the handful of people in the mainstream media who actually bother to report on this fact have called it a sneaky, underhanded ploy. And it's actually not. It's a perfectly legitimate strategy to win the election. Of course, from the stance of anyone with a working brain cell, Mitt Romney has about as much chance as Obama against Obama as a snowflake in hell. The GOP doesn't really like him. He's kind of vague and moderate. He's not really energizing the party. The Republicans are up in arms about Barack Obama right now. What they want is a candidate who will actually energize them and draw new voting blocks to their side to defeat Obama. Romney's not going to do that. He can't even mobilize the evangelicals because he's a Mormon. So Mitt Romney will not be the next president. I say that with absolute certainty. If he gets the nomination, he'll lose against Obama. I foresee Obama winning by a landslide victory, despite what the polls may say. Also, considering the fact that Romney care and Obamacare are basically the same thing, that doesn't help him. But Ron Paul has won the majority of delegates in Iowa, Minnesota, Maine, and now Nevada four states, none of which he won the popular vote in. He was third in Iowa. He was technically second in Maine, although technically he won Maine. Uh, the Maine, of course, electoral process is screwed up, and they deliberately withheld some of the results to make it look like Romney won to save face, because they didn't want that Ron Paul winning our state. Of course, I believe he came in second in Minnesota. And uh, he's going to go on and do this in other states. You do understand that. He's approaching the 100 delegate point, and he's poised to sweep up hundreds and hundreds more through this process. Romney won 50% of the vote in Nevada. He won the state of Nevada by a fairly wide margin. He got three delegates out of 25 delegates. The rest all went to Ron Paul. Now, while Romney can maybe challenge some of these results, it seems like it's pretty steadfast and Ron Paul is going to grab up an enormous delegate count over the coming few months. While this probably won't put him over the limit for what he would need to get nominated almost automatically, and while Romney may actually hit that real number, if Ron Paul wins his home state of Texas, and if he does well in California, which he's slated to since he spent a huge amount of time in California and he also in his home state. If he t wins or comes close to winning both of those states and continues his strategy, he will have about as many delegates as Romney has. Now that probably scares the establishment GOP because of course they want Romney because he's the typical Republican establishment person other than the fact that he's not a fundamentalist Protestant, he's very rich, He's sort of a moderate, slightly right-leaning, vague individual. His main party stance is just, I'm not Obama. Now, to me, Romney and Obama are the same person, which is why I will refuse to vote for either of them. If Romney gets the nomination and Ron Paul doesn't run third party, I'll vote for myself. 
I will not waste my vote on Mitt Romney. I will not waste my vote on Obama. Essentially, there's only one candidate in the race if Romney gets the nomination, and that's Obamney. Obamney, 2012. They're the same thing. Neither of them has a clue how to run the country. Neither of them cares about your civil rights. Neither of them cares about any of you. And if you think they do, you've got a problem. Ron Paul can organize the youth vote, the progressives, the libertarians, uh, young and old alike. You put him up against Obama, he'll steamroll Obama into a pile of nothingness. He's got certainly better debating skills than Romney has. Romney basically stands there and makes jokes the entire time. I was, I was privileged enough when I was in high school, and I won second prize in this contest, which was pretty cool. I was supposed to write um, sort of uh, something for the local paper, and a bunch of people were doing it, dozens of people entered the contest, about the uh, debate between the two candidates for the Senate. It was Rich Tarrant, who was the Republican, against Bernie Sanders, who was... He's in, technically independent, but he goes with the Democrats. And he's a socialist, the only socialist senator, of course, from my own liberal state of Vermont. Bernie Sanders is a pretty cool guy. I, I supported uh, Sanders in that race. But anyway, when they were debating, I watched what happened. You have Sanders, very much like Obama in many ways, sort of an idealist, fiery. He obviously, while he may have some bad ideas too, he believes at least in what he's saying. Then you have Romney, sort of like Rich Tarrant. He's this tall, sort of demure dude who, you know, cracks sarcastic jokes. Rich Tarrant got steamrolled in the competition. Not just because Sanders was the incumbent and favorite to begin with, like Obama is now, but because his debating style turned people off to want to vote for him. Sanders got about 66% of the vote. Rich Tarrant got a third. That's exactly what's going to happen if you put... Obamni in a cage with another Obamni because they're the same person. They're just going to fight each other, look stupid. Obama will be reelected, and then all the Republican hopes and dreams of stopping this great socialist threat to America will come to absolutely nothing. Republicans wish that he was another Jimmy Carter. No, Jimmy Carter's approval ratings were a lot lower, and the recession back then was worse than the one we're in now. Running on the idea that Obama's a bad candidate doesn't help you if the candidate you put up against him is equally bad. That is why Romney will never be the president of the United States. It's just not going to happen. If you value your state's sovereignty, if you value getting rid of Obama and actually putting someone in there that's a suitable replacement for Obama, rather than just sort of a vague stand-in, because he's got an R after his name, vote for Ron Paul. He's still in the running, and he's doing quite well, and his strategy is going to pay off. At the very least, he'll be seated at the convention, he'll have an influence on, on the party, might even get a VP pick. Now, if Ron Paul was picked as vice president for Romney, would I vote for Romney? I'd have to think about that long and hard because I think it should be the other way around. I think Ron Paul should be the president, and if anything, Romney should be the vice presidential candidate. Although it would be better if they put Vesey, uh, Jesse Ventura or someone who actually knew what they were talking about in that position. But no, I'm not going to vote for fucking Romney. Romney's a jackass, just like Obama's a jackass. I don't give a shit about either of them. You think I want to waste my vote on them? You're crazy. Uh, it's just, you know, it's like choosing between two turds. Uh, and expecting one of them is better than the other. They're still turds. Uh, neither of them, no turd alive can run a country. It just sits there and rocks and flies fly around it. That's what a turd does. It's a pile of shit. And that's what Obamni is to me, a pile of shit. Obama's slightly... I'd actually vote for Obama before I'd vote for Romney. I'm not a Democrat. I'm an independent. And I think most independents will think the same thing. They'll be, hmm, should we vote in the guy who's got at least four years of experience and at least sounds coherent? Or should we vote in this other dude who's crushed his own state's economy, made money off of liquidating companies and putting thousands out of work, whose medical, Medicare model was essentially the same, medical, not Medicare, medical model was essentially the same as what Obama's using now and all the Republicans are complaining about. Yes, this sounds like the candidate of the century. 
the Republicans must have a pretty low opinion of Obama's reelectability if they're putting someone like Romney before him, especially when you think about one simple thing. Romney was playing second fiddle to McCain the last time around to determine who was going to go up against Hillary and or Obama. Romney got crushed by John McCain. What happened to John McCain? He got crushed by Obama. So Mitt Romney got double fucked, and he's going to get double fucked again, because Ron Paul theoretically can still take the nomination. I think he would energize the Republican Party a lot better than Romney would. Peace out.